Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker, sir. I was pleased and happy when our Honorable Chief Minister has placed the 10 million dream of Meghalaya. I believe all the Meghalayans will be happy. It will be one of the happiest states. But in the meantime, when you look at the, you know, uh, the Mm. the data of our India that Meghala has become one, uh, one of the third poorest state in terms of GDP per capita as part of the Niti Ayok discussions in paper multidimensional poverty in India. But in the meantime, I'm so happy also that we have got only 3% unemployment in our state <laughs> with the new new project mr speaker sir our people cannot achieve anything without understanding the methodology and the strategy and attempting to solve every livelihood unless the government analyzed the process required for the development in our state and to have the point to see the pitfall in search for the new challenges of development, which is a long process in experimentations with alternate for the new development, Mr. Speaker, sir. Sir, ignoring the reality is quite devastating to see the government employees, those temporary employees, actually. Sometimes for the salary, they have to come out and agitate which doesn't look good. Like non-cooperation movement, so and so forth. The fact is that because of the wishful thinking and the denial and the other forms of avoiding the reality that deeply embedded with the system. It is good to see the financial focus that is going to benefit our people. But it will determine the best on the strategy and operating activities and the structure of business. Draw the draft strategy is there, but how to figure how the business will be positioned and depreciated against the loan component. We are talking about those loan components that the government is trying to give it to the people. But if it is not positioned, then the debt will be quite high. Now, because of those, the government has to crystallize the reality and the external environment, link them with the chosen set of financial targets. And I believe the foundation should be valuing the fundamental rights and its usefulness, importance will definitely be understood and respected by the government for the people. I believe this government will dig distinguishly manage to practice what they have said in this budget. Mr. Speaker, sir. Now we have seen lots of commodities inflating, rising price. Even the price of rice within the last 11 months is this increase, double the amount. It was only 800, now it has become almost 2,000. But till then, we have not discussed about the seven pay commissions. Other states, 19 of our States has already acquired the seven pay commission, Mr. Speaker, sir, but we are still stuck with the fifth pay commissions. If it can, you know, do so, something about it, I think the people will be more happier rather than that 10 billion dream, Mr. Speaker, sir. I've got a few points. Yesterday I have pointed out about the police department recruitment. I was trying to address the police department yesterday, sir, regarding the our Chief Minister himself has talked about the physical fitness. Then why do, do, do we have to de uh, deal with the age? Those who are 30 also, they might be stronger than the person who is 18. So if we could consider, reconsider this particular, demand will be made by the department, no doubt about it. Even in the forest department also, in one time I could remember, females were not taken for the rangers. But nowadays, they started taking. Even in the police department also, before, they don't take the police females, but now they started taking. 
So likewise, according to their physical fitness, if the, that age bar can be at least changed, I think it will do some justifications those who have been waiting and lingering for this particular member. job. Please try to wind up. Mr. Speaker, sir, even the teachers, deficit, non-government deficit school teachers, Mr. Speaker, it was sanctioned, but it's already two months which has not, their salary has not been paid. Even the doctors who are teaching, the faculties who are teaching some issues within the department, they have not been given the salary. With these few words, Mr. Speaker, sir, if those can be addressed seriously, I believe people will not look at the 10 billion budget, but our state will be happy and will be one of the happiest states. With these few words, Mr. Speaker, sir, Thank I you. resume Thank you. May I request honorable member, Gavin William Emily, please. So, Deputy Speaker, sir, thank you for allowing me to participate in the discussions of the budget as presented by the Honorable Leader of the House. We can see, sir, from the budget speech that the government has termed this current budget as the Mission 10 and aim for building a 10 billion US dollar, dollar economy by the year 2028 and also with an aim to place our state in the top 10 states amongst all the states in the country by the year 2032 in terms of per capita GDP and ensuring higher level of achievement of, of sustainable development goals. And I hope and believe, sir, that this intention of the government is achieved within the time frame as indicated. Under the primary sector, sir, we could see, sir, that the government appreciates the fact that majority of the population depends directly or indirectly upon this particular sector. Therefore, we could see that a huge amount of allocation has been allocated to this sector, sir. We could see, sir, that the government also has plans to construct prime hubs in all the blocks across the state, thereby to ensure that our local produce can also be promoted and also, sir, we could see that various missions have been initiated by this present government. And I'm very happy to be informed, sir, that these mission mode projects has benefited around one lakh households across the state. And I'm very hopeful that with these interventions in place, the people will greatly benefit from the agricultural sector. However, sir, I would also like to mention that there are still some products under the agricultural and horticultural sector, which I would like to urge the government to keep more focus and maybe where we could also implement through a mission mode. Under the health sector, sir, we could see that 1,970 crores have been earmarked towards this particular sector. This shows the priority of the government, and I'm very confident that with this huge allocation, coupled with the focus approach in tackling the issues on the ground, the health parameters in the state will improve gradually in the future. Now, coming to the empowerment of women. Yes, sir, we could see that the increase of the women members in the self-help group network from just 60,000 in 2018. And now we are having around 4.37 lakh members across the state in this current year. It's already a remarkable indicator highlighting the achievement of the government in this particular sector. Yes, sir, under the tourism sector, knowing that the tourism sector is one of the sectors that can contribute substantially to the economic growth of the state and also its inhabitants. We are very happy that the government has really prioritized this sector. And I'm also thankful to the government, sir, for the plans to construct a Mokodok skywalk and also to have a good hotel at Sora, considering the fact that our area is known for captivating tourists from all over the world. Sir, so now coming to the issue of the youth in the state. Understanding that 
72% of the state's population consists of youths below the age of 35. We could see that various interventions have been undertaken by the government to drive the youths in the right direction so as to ensure that our state gets a bright future in the coming days. Yes, sir, knowing the potential of our youth, I'm very happy that the government has provided construction of various sports infrastructure across the state, also introduced programs aimed at fostering the entrepreneurial spirit amongst our youths, ongoing skilling programs which have also been imparted to the youths. I am very hopeful, sir, that with such programs in place, this will really help to prepare our youth for the many, many demands in the skilled workforce and also to help them become more well-rounded individuals in the coming days. So under the education sector, sir, we could see, sir, that the government plans to upgrade the various Aganwadi centers across the state and also expand the network to cover all uncovered villages. This is really a great step to ensure that the child gets the required facilities, especially at the foundation stage. I would also like to place on record, sir, that the government in these five years, of course, I would like to thank the government under the leadership of the Honorable Chief Minister, that all the dilapidated conditions of the government LP schools under my constituency in these last five years have been newly constructed, thereby ensuring a dignified and appropriate learning environment to our students. And I remember, so, kindly of course, wind up. Okay, sir, I'll end my speech. So with these few words, I would once again express my deepest gratitude to the Honourable Leader of the House for presenting this budget 2024-25. And with these few submissions, sir, I resume my seat. Thank you, sir. Thank you. May I request Honourable Member Nujor Kushingho, MLA, to take the floor. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Deputy Speaker, sir, for giving me this time to participate in this budget speech discussion. Uh, I really like to appreciate the effort that was being made by this present government under the leadership of our Honorable CMC Conrad K. Sangma for <laughs> presenting a very beautiful budget which aimed to make our economy, the state of Meghalaya, as a $10 billion economy. So, uh, so I would like to make some few suggestions. Sir. And that is under the veterinary department. Under the veterinary department, sir, there's uh, one assurance that was being assured to me on the floor of this August House, and that was since the budget session of 2019, and that was the upgradation of Saasnian KBC to a dispensary. Although the assurance has only been given on the floor of the House, but the thing is that till now, we are yet to see the light of the day, sir. That, that, and that also, assurance since 2019. So I would like to urge upon the Honorable Chief Minister to kindly look into the matter to uh, expedite the process for upgradation of the Sasnian KVC to a dispensary. And when it comes to health sector, sir, the very point that I have raised time and again, and that is the setting up a PHC at Sierra Village. Sir. I just recently have discussed this matter with the Honorable Health Minister. So once again, sir, why I raise this very important PHC because it is a need of the day for the people who reside in Block 1 area. So, for just small medication, they have to come all the way from Block 1 to Saasniang or to Juai, which is more than 50 to 60 kilometers away. Sir. So that's why, sir, if the government could consider this proposal to set up a PHC in Pseer Village, it will be of a great benefit for those people reside in Block 1 area. So. And when it comes to road sector, sir, again, the issue that I have raised time and again, so, sir, Again, through you, I would like to urge upon the Honorable Chief Minister and also our Honorable Deputy Chief Minister in charge PWD to kindly look into the proposal of the Katkasla Mojem Drikendeng Road, sir. 
why I raise this issue time and again because till now there's yet to be a single <coughs> road that is possible all the way down in block one area so there's only one kacha road which is possible only in winter time so I would like to urge upon the honorable chief minister and also deputy chief minister to kindly look into the matter and to expedite the process for the proposal of this Katka Slam Mojan Brickendang Road and I'm so grateful to the Honorable Deputy Chief Minister he informed me last time that the name of the road has only been there in the list of the proposed schemes. So I will expect our Honorable Deputy Chief Minister to kindly look into this special road. Sir. And also sir, the assurance that was being made by the Honorable Deputy Chief Minister sir, last budget session 2019 with regard to the NH6, National Highway 6 sir, from Maurinkineng to Malida. We used to face a lot of problems sir, being a one of the heavy traffic congested road in the state. So we used to experience a lot of traffic jam from time and time. So that's why sir, I would like to urge upon our Honorable Chief Minister and our Honorable Deputy Chief Minister in charge PWD to kindly look into the matter to expedite the proposal for the construction of NH6. And on the, the CM Correct Scheme, sir, I would like to point out to you, Mr. Deputy Speaker, sir, there's two villages which are yet to be connected in my constituency, and that is Mobandu village with a population of uh, around 600 people and a household of not less than 70 households. Till date, it is yet to be connected. And also, sir, another village that is Madan Barwai village. Although it is quite a small village, but we expect, sir, that a road should be constructed to this small village. Sir. And also, sir, there's a great need of the urgent repair of this Katka here road. It is located in the, in the disputed area, sir. And the road, as of now, it's in a very bad condition. So I would like to urge upon the government and also to our Honorable CM to kindly, to kindly repair the Katkaslaps here road, which is in a very deplorable condition as of now. So. And also, sir, I would like to... Honorable Member, please try to wind up. I would like to remind to the, with, when it comes to the border area development scheme, sir, I will urge the Honorable Chief Minister to kindly increase the fund and also to ease the guideline to, for the implementation of this very set program, sir. And also, sir, when it comes to education sector, I would like to remind our Honorable Chief Minister to kindly sanction for the construction of this Saulingdo Higher Secondary School, sir. Our Honorable CM has been there personally along with me, so I would like to remind again our Honorable CM to kindly consider for the construction of the Southern Door Higher Secondary School building. And one last point, sir, on the Soil and Water Conservation Department, I made one proposal last time, and that is to set up a Laskin Beat office in Laskin Village. So I would like to urge upon the government to you, Mr. Deputy Speaker, sir, to kindly consider this proposal, and that is the, to set up a beat office in Laskin Village. So I have so many points, but my time is up. So once again, thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker, for giving this opportunity. Thank you, sir. Thank you.